When adding solar photovoltaic systems to homes with meter main combination service panels, it can be difficult to maintain code compliance. This is because there may be nowhere to do a supply-side interconnection. When the system exceeds the 120% rule found in the 2017 National Electrical Code, Section 705.12b, 2, 3, b, an alternative interconnection method is needed. One way to comply is to downrate the premises main breaker, but that is not always possible, advisable, or preferable. That's where a feeder tap comes in handy, but it is important to verify that upstream and downstream conductors and bus bars are properly protected from overcurrent. Multiple code sections need to be applied to accomplish this successfully. This video will show you one common example. Other similar methods are also possible. This example is based on the 2017 NEC, but it also applies to the equivalent sections in the 2014 and 2020 code. Let's look at this system where there is a 200 amp meter main with existing loads. The sum of the load circuit breaker ratings is 100 amps. It is a 200 amp bus. We have a 200 amp feeder to a sub panel with 200 amp rated conductors. The conductors are connected to feed through lugs in the meter main panel. The sub panel is a 200 amp rated bus with a 200 amp main breaker. In this example, we want to add a solar inverter with an 80 amp output rating, meaning we need to use a 100 amp overcurrent device per NEC 690.9. So what we are doing is tapping the feeder conductor inside the sub panel enclosure. This is often a convenient location for an interconnection point. Let's look at each conductor and each bus bar and demonstrate how this interconnection complies with code. First, the inverter output circuit is a feeder tap. This is covered in section 705.12b2.2. The tap must be sized the same as the overcurrent device rating, and the tap must comply with the standard tap rules in 240.21b. These conductors will need to be less than 10 or 25 feet long and need to be rated at 10% or one-third of the feeder rating, respectively. In this case, the 100 amp rated tap conductor is well within the tap rule, so we can move on. The feeder in this case is rated at 200 amps. On the load side of the tap, the conductor typically needs to be rated for the sum of the primary source over current device, plus 125% of the inverter output rating, which would be 300 amps. However, since there is an overcurrent device immediately on the load side of the tap, the existing 200 amp conductor complies with section 705.12b21. B. The code does not say how long this conductor can be, but common practice is to limit this to 25 feet. Because the subpanel overcurrent device limits current from loads on this segment to 200 amps, no further analysis is required. The subpanel bus is also properly protected. Moving upstream, the section of the feeder on the line side of the tap has a primary overcurrent protection of 200 amps. This section can only experience current in the forward direction of 200 amps because it is limited by the subpanel overcurrent device rating. Any backfeed from the solar energy system will only reduce the current on the feeder. Therefore, the current on the feeder can never exceed its rating. The meter main bus bar is where most people get tripped up. This is where NEC section 705.12b 2 3 c comes in. This is known as the sum of the breakers rule. It is important to note that only one of the subsections of 705.12b 2 3 needs to be followed. The well-known 120% rule does not apply. What subsection C states is that the sum of the rating of all overcurrent devices on the bus bar, including the backfed solar circuit breaker cannot exceed the bus rating. There are a couple ways to look at this, but careful analysis shows why this is safe and compliant. First, let's examine the text. The utility breaker is excluded from consideration. The key word is on. We are talking only about circuit breakers that are physically on this bus bar plus any solar current that can potentially backfeed this bus. We are not talking about feeders or overcurrent devices at the end of the feeder. We're only talking about circuit breakers on the bus itself. Now, the way the code is written should be changed because it does not differentiate where the solar backfeed is connected to the bus. It presumes that it can be connected at any location. Think of it this way. If the solar backfeed was to be connected at the primary supply end of the bus, there could be a portion of the bus that exceeds its rating, 
because the meter main bus would be between the solar interconnection point and the downstream subpanel. If the solar is connected downstream of the end of the bus, as it is in this example, there is no potential for the current to exceed 100% at any location on the meter main bus bar. The conservative approach is to limit the total loads plus the solar backfeed to the bus rating, no matter where the solar backfeed lands on the bus. But in this case, you must connect the solar backfeed in a way that it is not additive to the supply on the bus in the forward or normal direction of current flow. The bottom line is that this bus can never experience more than 200 amps of current in this example, at any location along the bus, in any direction. If all of the loads on the meter main bus are drawing their maximum current, the current on any portion of the bus can never exceed 200 amps. The worst case scenario is that there is no solar backfeed, the meter main loads are drawing 100 amps, and the subpanel is drawing 100 amps. Of course, this can occur even without solar connected. If the subpanel draws more than 100 amps in this scenario, the utility breaker will trip due to overcurrent. Alternatively, if there is solar input, it will only serve to reduce the current on the meter main bus. This is where most people get tripped up. What is important to understand is the solar current supplied is not additive to the bus. It only serves to reduce the current necessary from the utility. That is also why you exclude the subpanel from the calculation. For purposes of section 705.12b, 2, 3, c, the subpanel is not a load on the meter main bus because it is located downstream of the solar interconnection point on a feeder and it is protected by its own overcurrent device per section 705.12b, 2, 1, b. Remember, solar backfeed only serves to reduce the current on the meter main bus, not increase it. Before any solar is added in this scenario, the maximum current on the meter main bus without tripping an overcurrent device, is 200 amps. With solar added to a downstream feeder, it can only be less current, not more. To properly apply section 705.12b, you need to analyze each section of conductor and each bus independently. Once you realize that solar backfeed serves to reduce forward current, all it takes is to trace the potential flows of current under worst-case scenarios. The sum rule in the 2017 NEC section 705.12b, 2, 3, c, was added in the 2014 NEC. Prior to that, in the 2011 code, the 120% rule was the only way to comply with load side interconnections. The code writers understood that there are other safe ways to connect solar energy system to the load side of a wiring system. In fact, the sum rule is essentially a 100% rule, making it safer in many ways than the 120% rule. There are many ways to use subsection C to result in a compliant interconnection. The key is to analyze the bus bar discreetly. Add up the load over current on each phase of the bus and add any solar backfeed, regardless of whether it is on the bus or downstream on a feeder or subpanel. If the sum is less than the bus rating, you are most likely good to go. Make sure you add the required label shown in the code subsection to alert future workers that there is a load limit on the bus. That's all for now. Hopefully this helps people who are stuck with challenging interconnections where the 120% rule can't be applied or where downrating the main breaker is not the best option. Be safe and thanks for watching.